And it's very interesting because when we started the journey with Formula E, we wanted to reduce our emissions further and we were looking for a courier van that we could, uh, you know, electric courier van that we could drive in all the big cities. The established um, car manufacturers didn't want to get involved. They were doing their own saloon cars. So we designed and built our own. This vehicle now, it's, it's fully electric. There's 2,500 driving around in Germany. We've just exported some to Austria and we've actually just sold one to a third party. And now we're looking at how do we develop the robotics and self-driving capabilities of, our, of our, our own vehicles. I'll just show you a, a small clip here. That the writing's in German, but don't let that put you off because the idea is very clear. So a lot of investment in robotics and self-driving vehicles and electrification. And then drones. Everybody loves drones. Everybody wants to know what you're doing about drone, drone technology. We do have drones up and running, uh, really from more remote locations and very difficult locations. I don't think you'll see drones flying over New York City in, in, the, in, the, in the near future. I think there's a, you know, there's a lot of issues there. But for remote deliveries to difficult areas, we've designed these kind of um, systems where you know, they go in and out of a, what we call a pack station, which is a place where people can go to pick up uh, and, and, and send their, their um, parcels from. So I think you'll find this is very interesting. It, it's it, it, it's state-of-the-art technology as, a, uh, as, as it relates to drone technology. So I'm getting association with universities and other partners, but just shows you that the, the pickup and delivery technology is there. You don't have to be high tech though to be green. We have these cube cycles in about seven or eight countries now throughout Europe. We're hoping to get them introduced into uh, into New York City as well pretty soon. The problem is they've got four wheels, not three, so we have to get sort of some kind of special permission. Um, but this is, this is things that we're working on. Uh, we're also doing a, a trial with. Um, smart cars where we can get a password and deliver um, a customer's shipment to the trunk of his car. He gets confirmation that it's done um, with, through, through a call number, so it just helps us. A lot of talk about um, self-driving vehicles, but we've also got these things called EffiBots, and you'll see some of these on the track here um, at the Formula E racing, where we can program a, a cart you know, to follow an individual round, uh, pick up a few parcels and, and, and you know, just help him to uh, um, do his job quicker and more efficiently. We've also invested a lot in augmented reality. I think we've got some uh, examples at the back of the, of the room here. But you know, using these glasses, I think that, uh, with the
the technology um, on pick and pack, we can improve on fisheries at about 20 to 30 percent. So it's all been it's all been pretty well proven. And as you saw with the fan zone, we, we launch a lot of competitions amongst entrepreneurs and amongst universities to look for the next big idea. And uh, one of them that we're particularly proud about is one called Hyperloop. This is something that Elon Musk um, uh, put out there as a challenge. It's all about moving material through a, um, um, a tube with, you know, uh, with the air taken out. That really sort of reduces the drag, makes it, makes it more efficient. The university that we backed really sort of won, won the award. So just let me show you some young people explaining exactly what this, uh, this technology is. The SpaceX Hyper Competition is a competition that has been set up uh, in California by Elon Musk for student teams to develop the new form of transportation. Well, a Hyperloop is sort of a small lightweight train running in a tube. In the tube there's almost no air pressure. Because there's no air, you get a lot of other positive effects. Uh, you can go much faster than any other system. And because there's no air resistance, you also you don't lose a lot of energy, so the system is much more efficient. We will mainly focus on transporting passengers, but ESL has a great vision about how to transport cargo. And since the pod that's here behind me is only consuming the same amount of electricity as a light bulb, around 80 watts, uh, the whole concept could be CO2 neutral. So this is a great example of a carbon neutral future. And, uh, the blonde haired guy there is only about 23. He's, uh, he's left university now to set up a real working um, Hyperloop. So I think the future's uh, in good shape. So just my last slide, um, you can digitize everything. Um, you know, motivated people is really what makes a big difference to everything. A lot of people uh, raise some concerns about digitization and I don't believe that. I think it's a job creator. You know, we're seeing at the moment in Europe, in the United States, in Japan, almost full employment in a lot of countries. It's at it's, it's the best records. But motivating people is still going to be extremely important. And it's important because, you know, the planet's important. Our, our future generations, uh, we're really committed to this 2050 target. Uh, we can't do it by ourselves. We need partners. We need the whole world to get around this. We need to create communities to make sure that um, by that time we, we live in a place that's going to give a secure future for everybody. So with that, I'll, um, I'll hand over to uh, our partner, uh, Ali Russell, to tell us about Formula E and the exciting things that we're going on there.